It is officially now rude to ask a guest to remove their shoes when they enter your apartment, according to the New York Times. And people are mad. Please don't ask people to take off their shoes when entering your apartment. It's rude. Rebecca Gardner, event planner, interior designer. Whoa! What are you doing publishing this rules for partying, David? This is going viral for so many different reasons. Basically, New York Times <laughs> released this article. It kind of in like their opinion side or it's, whatever. It's called How to Party Without Regrets. And it is written by uh, this guy and this guy. And this girl. Yeah, yeah, right. And there's this just, uh, so it's basically like a bunch of little like tweet size tips for partying at your house and having guests over and people are all chiming in and giving their own rules to partying and people are just up in arms. The one that's going viral obviously is uh, it's rude to tell your guests to remove their shoes and that's crazy. Obviously for an Asian, we cannot even conceive almost a situation where you would keep your shoes on. Uh, I will say some Asians have become that Americanized though. Right. Yeah, it kind of depends on the floors you have too in your house, okay? If it's carpet, heck no. If it's concrete, you can make an argument. Right. Let's just read the article. As the summertime social world is about to begin, we ask dozens of socially adept people, socialites, artists, designers, restaurateurs, party planners, to weigh in on how to be the kind of guest who gets invited back and how to be a gracious host. They said... <laughs> Absolutely, do not talk politics. Don't leave the party early. It's okay to take an edible beforehand to loosen up. Bring champagne and white wine because red wine stains carpets. And try to keep your convos to 30 seconds, but talk to everybody. And of course, obviously, if you read the list, there's like 50 recommendations. Some of them are solid, basic advice, Andrew. But a lot of people were saying, how could the New York Times, headquartered in New York City, publish something that feels like it is designed only for white people? people from the Upper West Side or Upper East Side. Yeah, well, we're going to get into it. Obviously, a ton of reactions. This is not the first time New York Times has talked about uh, taking off your shoes because obviously in New York, having like apartment parties and being very social, it's a big thing. And your apartments are usually not that spacious. So I think this topic has come up a lot. But I think it's really funny, David. There's some funny things about this because I know this debate about shoes on, shoes off in the house. It goes on and all because of the germs or actually the germs aren't that bad, blah, blah, blah. But there are some reasons why people say to let people keep their shoes on. Do you want to know the reasons why? Because I think as Asians, David, we all kind of know the reasons why to take them off, right? Well, it's just our culture. Yeah, but it's also cleanliness, right? right, right cleanliness, right. culture. But it's funny because I found the reasons why some people think you should leave it on and why it's rude and maybe they didn't go into these. But in the New York Times in 2003, they said, you're removing someone's power, you're removing their costume, and it's rude. And especially for a man who's wearing shoes to appear taller, it's like you're asking them to remove their toupee. Is there any truth to this? I think we have to understand as Asians from the East, uh, and by the way, I know that other cultures take off their shoes too, particularly people in Iceland and very snowy environments. Russia, obviously, they take off Poland, things like that. Anywhere with snow, you have to because you're going to track snow into the house. But um, I feel like this, Anglo-Saxon culture, particularly from England slash whatever Germany America that informs like Anglo culture, they have more sexual connotations around feet and more power issues around feet than Asians view it. Yeah, for sure. Like they have more psychological, I, I don't know what you say, psych, just no. psychosis about it. No, more fetish. There's yeah. a more fetish around feet. Like the whole like, T send me a picture of your feet. Like, I don't think that's really came from the Asian thing. You know, no, no, like no. Asian to Asians feet are just for walking and yeah. for being, existing on them. And, and also I remember I used to sell women's shoes at a department store before we went into YouTube and I would get asked by some like, and there were always white dudes. Like I asked, got asked a couple times. They were like, would look at me and be like, so dude, are you a foot guy? And I'd be like, no, I'm not a foot. Like, I don't even know what that is. Like, I'm not grossed out by food, but I'm not turned on by feet either. What do you think it is about maybe uh, Western European culture that is into foot fetishes? Dude, I don't know if it's specifically Anglo thing, yeah, Franco, Celtic. Uh, maybe maybe I don't know. it might be something from Socrates. Did Socrates or... 
Galileo say something about feet. But you know what's funny? <laughs> it's like this list and like, oh, take off, your sh don't don't ask me to take off my shoes. That's rude. That is coming from like an upper east side, like upper middle class, like kind of wealth, wealthy kind right, of- Right, right. I, I spend summers in the Hamptons type thing, right? But it's funny because now some hippie white people are going barefoot around New York City. So they're doing the opposite. Like Drew Barrymore was caught walking around New York City barefoot and she's a multimillionaire Hollywood actress. And because a lot of people are like, oh, it's healthy for your feet, expose your feet to the elements. So now we have all this different contrasting, like on one side, hippie white people are like, don't wear shoes. I'm going bareless, bare sh barefoot. And then Asians are like, uh, wear shoes, but don't wear them in the house. And then some other white people are like, shoes on all the time, even in the house. Right, we gotta get into some dynamics This uh, based off this article, Andrew. It feels like even people on the left are divided because the New York Times is a left-facing, it's almost viewed as what, the marquee moderate left paper. And for them to publish this by two white people, basically asking mostly rich white socialites on what everybody should do, because they didn't say in the article, by the way, we're all white. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm saying a lot of minorities online were offended because a lot of, I guess, educated minorities take the New York Times with a lot of, um, they weigh its words very heavily. Yeah, but what they meant to say is that these are our rules for partying. If you're a upper middle class, old money, white person living in the upper west or east side, that's what I mean this list is for. Right, so you're saying the list could be valid if they made it hyper-selective to that population, but obviously if they said that, it yeah. would never even get published, yeah, right? And, and I think also when she said it was rude to ask, like, I think it's like, uh, it's different if, like, anybody can do whatever they want in their home. I don't care if you keep your shoes on in your home. That's right. your choice, you know? But I'm saying, like, for her to say it's rude, and then everybody's being like, I don't know if it's rude. Like, I ask my friends and guests to do that all the time. It's not rude. Right. It just depends on what culture you're coming from. I do think white people potentially, depending on the, how white they are, could think it's rude. Yeah, if they're not exposed to other cultures, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that the reason why I saw so many, like, blue checkmark Asians popping out of the woodwork is because it's like, even though this isn't obviously something like street violence or just, like, uh, Asian community getting ignored for this program or that program. It's or not that concerned. serious. It's not that serious. It's because... I think a lot of Asian Americans that are more in that model minority archetype, we you went to school or grad school or your master's program with rich white people that reminded you of this. And I think that that's what is like, I guess, triggering about it because they may have been your more entitled classmates or your classmates that took, not that there's anything wrong with it, but you know, Europe, expensive European vacations where you had like a summer job or whatever in your grad school program. Um, anyway, guys, I think it, there's actually a deeper subconscious idea here that universally the rest of the world, for the most part, obviously there's some exceptions, the rest of the world wants to take the shoes off, right? Americans, specifically the ruling class of white Anglos, they want to leave their shoes on. And I think a lot of people felt like this girl, Rebecca Gardner, and the people who wrote this article were basically like, well, we're like the most successful and we have the most wealth in America. So even though you guys have your logic, you're wrong. Mm. Like basically like them basically saying, holding on to like their dominance, validating something that I guess scientifically doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Yeah. Because you can track a lot of germs and dirt in with your shoes. Yeah, I, I mean, I think in the same right though, Obviously, it's your home. You can choose what to do with it. I think that if an Asian person goes up to a white person who keeps their shoes on their apartment and it's like, oh my gosh, you are disgusting. These disgusting white people wear their shoes in their house. How can you do that? And you're trying to shame them too. I don't, I don't think you need to step that far. I don't think you need to do that because both viewpoints are coming from a place of superiority. Obviously, the logic is that there are germs on your foot, especially from New York City, but the also logic is that, you know, wearing your shoes around your house is not gonna kill you. It's not, it's probably not. It has not been shown to kill you. It's been shown to bring in germs, but how much those germs do to you, I don't know. Right, right, right. Um, anyway, let's just get into the comments section, Andrew. Some people were really mad at the article. They were like, oh my gosh, not just the shoe tip, but all the tips feel incredibly transactional and unfun. Um, this is actually kind of like the battle between the new America and the old America. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To be honest, I mean, it's kind of like, I guess, do these little like mannerisms, like culture wars, is it 1960s like, upper middle class to rich whites versus everybody else. 
in this article. I mean, I think yeah, it's... Yeah, you know what it kind of feels like? It kind of feels like the elites versus everyone else now. You know, maybe the elites of both the left and right t- uh, keep their shoes on in their house. Right. Point number two, Andrew, people were alluding to this. Like, is, is upper, like, light rich to upper middle class white culture to rich, rich white, you know, great Gatsby white culture? Is that what we are all supposed to aspire to be? if we try to get into Ivy League institutions or like good colleges? Mm. Like, is that the natural arc? Do all our mannerisms outside of the academics and the professional realm also have to follow that same mannerism? Mm. I think that that's a really good question. Is it like Leonardo DiCaprio in the movie Titanic where he had to learn the forks? Remember, like different forks for like different plates and stuff like that? And uh, because they were saying in this list that New York Times published, they were even talking about like how to treat the butler. And people were like, who has a butler in 2024? Whoa. Point number four, Andrew. Um, can't anybody in America just do whatever they want? So new immigrants, they come in. Um, some people were saying, oh, I'm from tomato Europe, the Caribbean, for example. I'm, I'm from Eastern Europe. I'm from Middle Eastern countries. We all take our shoes off. Can't, are, are we as valid to be like the American way? Because there was a lot of people arguing in the comment section being saying, well, you have to acknowledge that's not how America was for decades. You guys are bringing in a foreign culture with the, you must take off your shoes. And it turned into this whole like debate back and forth. Mm, uh, yeah, I guess it depends on how much you want to turn back the clocks of time, I guess. Right. Some people said, well, I have foot problems. Now, I can't take off my shoes. And someone said, well, why don't you just bring your own fold up shoes with an insole or something like that? Uh, Yeah. But also, if you have foot problems, I I believe walking on barefoot is better for your feet. So, like, it's good to strengthen your foot. So, in the long run, it can be good for you. Um, I mean, listen, if you are adverse to taking off your shoes when you go over to someone's house, uh, I guess... I guess those people, like, is it just people just have different circles of friends? Like, the people who are like, ah, no way, I'm taking off my shoes. They just don't go into, like, Asian houses? Yeah, I would say that those instances are probably pretty rare. But, like, I would imagine somebody brought, like, a, you know what I mean? You know, I'm thinking in my head just immediately to an all-Asian party, like a white boyfriend or something like that, Uh who may have not been exposed to that. But I don't know. Somebody got to, like record that instance on TikTok uh, and show it or something. Well, what if these white people are like, hey, well, at my parties, everybody has clean shoes. Nobody's a construction worker, so they can wear their shoes inside my place. It's not going to destroy the place. Or I'm just going to hire a cleaner afterwards. Anyway, I right, have the right. Bissell steam cleaner. I don't know. I can see. Listen, guys, I think there's room for nuance. Obviously, I'm not going to say like 100% of the time it got to be this way or that way. We got a, we got a family member with a concrete house and they you keep your shoes on when you go in there. This guy said, Americans keep our shoes on because protecting freedom requires certain tactical readiness that ultra other cultures do not seem capable of understanding because they are not us. That's hilarious. Taking it to that extent. Basically being like, keeping your shoes on is for military strong people who are ready for action how can you run out of the house and save somebody if you don't even have your shoes on he makes a point right 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 was that dan crenshaw yeah i mean listen okay so in the off chance there's a fire in your apartment and everybody has to exit as soon as possible i guess then people are shoeless right no that's a good point like i said man it's not a hundred out of a hundred but but we 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 ask people to take their shoes off a hundred out of a hundred people who enter our spot got to take their shoes off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then what if like, uh, why don't you just wear a tactical vest and carry around uh, a gun and a knife and I a do. All right, well, if you're that type of person, then don't take off your shoes. Right. Um, man, is this just Culture Wars 2024? Has the Culture Wars extended to house parties now? What, what's going on, man? I just think that it's like the writers of this, they were almost a little bit tone deaf in the sense of like maybe thinking America was like, 1980s or 70s with the Jane Fonda and the Christy Brinkley and stuff like that. Like, I just think that America's changed enough. That was a pretty interesting thing to say. But clearly, when you look at the photos, people all come from like these like upper crust white backgrounds. Yeah, I mean, these are the people who all want a Harry Met Sally type New York City. That's the one that they love in. They live in the Harry Met Sally New York City. Right. You're talking about Seinfeld, Frazier, that era. Sure. Whatever. Um, Ultimately, Andrew, what do you think? Yes, no, this caused a uh, big uproar. I'm just going to say that, you know, here we are. Everybody's disagreeing over everything in 2024, but yeah. 
listen, guys, just respect people's culture. Yeah, how about, how about this? Just do what you want in your house. I'm not really mad at this person. I don't really care that she said this fully, but the tone was a little bit condescending. How about that? But it also depends on like how much you expected them to be culturally sensitive yeah. or not. I mean, like, to be honest, when I see somebody like this, I'm generally going to yeah. assume they don't know anything. Yeah. When I walk into houses where I don't know, I'm always like, hey, shoes on, shoes off. Am I cool? And maybe I'll leave my shoes on. But I'll tell you this. When I leave my shoes on, I feel like I want to leave quicker. I don't stay very long with my shoes on. I'm just saying, if I'm in a place and they let me keep my shoes on, I'm ready to leave whenever. That's a good point. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace.